And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Everybody who's traded has gone through periods of time where their strategy hasn't worked. Where if not a hard stop, you should reevaluate the trades you're in uh, based on time. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Good morning and happy Thursday to my fine futures family and friends. It's time for the market prep Thursday, January the 5th. My name is John Hoagland. Thanks for trusting with your time. And as always, our focus here is on seeking accurate context, good risk management, and always remaining patient in your trading. If you're already in the markets, hopefully things are heading your direction. We do have some activity here after the early numbers uh, most of which uh, applying to the uh, employment situation that's going on here in the U.S. 7.15 a.m. this morning, the ADP employment report came out hugely larger than expected. Last month, they had added 127,000. They were expecting adding 150,000. This month, well, last month, they added 235,000. I would imagine there's a lot of speculation on that being um, seasonal employment that will come out over time, I'm sure. The jobless claims numbers came out also lower than expected. We were looking for 225,000 initial jobless claims. In December, came out 204,000 continuing jobless claims. They were looking for 1,708,000. It came out considerably lower at 1,694,000. Also news in the trade balance. Last month, there was a $78.2 billion deficit in the trade balance. They were looking for a $73 billion, $78.2 billion last month. They were looking for a $73 billion deficit in the trade balance, and it actually came out minus $61.5 billion. What that means to the markets, I'm sure we'll, yeah, we'll find out. It's very difficult to, to kind of decipher and to digest all this information, seemingly all at once here. So... Uh, we are also going to have uh, a Fed chair, Bostic, speaking at 8.20 a.m. Central, just about the same time Make Hope Money begins. 9.30, the nat gas numbers due out, and 10 o'clock, the crude inventories. The API came out last night with a surplus, an additional 3.3 million barrels in stock here in the U.S. The EIA is expecting a 1.1 million barrel boost. As far as other news regarding to the markets, relating the markets, uh, Amazon and Salesforce are preparing to cut jobs. Amazon as much as 18,000 jobs and Salesforce as many as 8,000 jobs as apparently consumer habits have reverted back to closer to pre-pandemic tendencies than they were expecting. Uh, the Federal Reserve noted yesterday that job cuts have yet to result in any loosening of the labor markets, employment data the next two days. We've already got two of them th this morning. We've got the uh, the unemployment number due out tomorrow. Uh, unemployment data lately is likely to reinforce that fact. As, But of course, as we all know, anything can happen. The unemployment rate is expected to stay at 3.7% last month the same as the prior month. So uh, I think he says a lot of these markets, although they've taken a little bit of a dive to the downside here, are more like um, kind of waiting for that unemployment number tomorrow. That's the biggest one this week. We've got some preliminary numbers today with that ADP and jobless claims numbers. The real number that I think everybody, investors and traders alike, are looking forward to is that unemployment number tomorrow. Q4 earnings have, are sneaking in slowly but surely into the picture as we've got Walgreens beating expectations this morning. We also had, I don't see if these are out yet, Constellation Brands misses on earnings per share but beats on revenue and ConAgra Foods beats in both. 
the earnings per share and revenue. Uh, it's just the beginning of earnings season, quarter four earnings season. So we'll be keeping an eye on all of those on the forecast, and we'll see how those affect the markets. Uh, as always, I ask if you like what you see that you hit the lucky like button, share, comment, question, feedback, heckling, and love are always welcome on the forecast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notification when we do go live. A brief look a few minutes ago at the VIX, the dollar index, and the yield on the 10-year, all of them on an uptick after the numbers came out this morning. The VIX up at 22.32, the dollar index with a nice jump up to 104.58, and the yield on the 10-year with a nice little, uh, maybe a six basis point pop uh, to 3.75%. That's about all of that. It's good to see everyone this morning. Thanks again for joining me. Charles March is the first one in the room this morning winning the prize. Caprice number one. Caprice 101, I should say. Uh, Steve Carlson, Shaw Cunningham, good uh, good morning. Joel Matson Bowes, Joel MB, same person. Good to see you. Dimitar, it almost looks like that says help, but it's hello. Thank you for joining me this morning. Caesar, good morning. Dan Trader, Laura McLaren, good morning. Scott Saw, and he conquered. James Mitchell, Bill Phillips, Joel. And B, Joel Matson Boas, a recent study has found that women who carry a little extra weight live longer than the men who mention it. I uh, told my wife that this morning, and she agrees that that is probably true. Spencer, good morning. Terrence, John, uh, Alejandro, good morning. Dan Trader, that's because it's good exercise. Men are getting weak, right? Uh, Jason Lewis, Phil P., good morning. Alejandro, with the quote for the day. All progress takes place outside the comfort zone. Michael John Bobak quote there. Thank you, Alejandro, for that. George George, Lacey was sitting right here. I think she's out in the other room uh, under the Christmas tree because she does think that she is uh, God's gift. And uh, in some ways, I think dogs are. Uh, Dan Trader, good morning. Good mor Lacey, everybody says good morning. Uh, Serenity Trader, buen dia. Vince. Good morning, JM, Rusty Golfer, Dr. VJ Nasdaq. Serenity Trader, that is a serious sweater. Is it a little chilly in Chicago? Well, it's snowing. It looks like it's about 31 degrees, so not excessively chilly, but we are getting some uh, accumulating snow out there. Lacey was very excited about that. Sarah Hall, good morning. Prayers and love to you as well. Shadow of Crimson, good to see you this morning. Good, Nice to see you back, Brody. Columbus. Uh, hugely larger is a technical term, right? Uh, unexpectedly larger than expected. Yes. Hugely larger, uh, oodles. These are all industry terms. Um, uh, 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 I got lost here. The rally sweater. There you go. ACH trademark, right? Uh, Steven, uh, JT. Good morning, Dan Trader. When the Fed first rakes, huh? When are the Fed rate hikes supposed to have an effect on the economy, like second quarter this year? Well, it seems as though they've been raising rates for longer than the six months that they say it takes to really show any effect in the, uh, in the economy. So I think they're going to be continuing to raise rates and holding them a little bit higher with these kind of positive numbers that we're seeing. The housing market seems to be one of the last things that seems to be holding up and hasn't really cracked yet, that and unemployment. Uh, Rooster, good morning, White House Cap. Good morning, Frank S. Uh, Rob T., J JT, good morning, David Fields. What's going on? Well, we got some numbers that came out this morning. We got to keep our uh, eyes peeled for opportunities here. Vix is coiling pretty seriously. I thought I found the article you gave us quite persuasive. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, I was thinking, you know, with the the the, the state that the markets and VIX has been really kind of unresponsive to it. Right. Good morning, Great Dane. Alfred. Good morning, David Fields. Don Clemens. Yes, prayers and thoughts for Demar Hamlin for sure. Glitter Sandwich, good morning, everybody. 
Make Hogue Money is right after the forecast this morning, right about 8.20. Here is the link to get into the Zoom meeting where you'll be able to vote for trades, but you can watch it right here on YouTube as well. I do keep an eye on the chat from both YouTube and the the Zoom meeting, but uh, we'll see if you guys can't make me some money this morning. Good morning, Mert, and good morning, Howitzer. All right, we are going to jump relatively quickly into the markets because we have a lot to discuss, and it's a busy morning between forecast and, and uh, uh, excuse me, prep and uh, the uh, Make Hogue Money session today. So I'm going to start here with the daily in the S&Ps. So, short time frame balance remains. We've got last week's low and last week's high, largely the extremes of that area of balance. Adding open interest for the last couple of days, including an, an estimated 5,600 increase in open interest yesterday on an inside day. So the market is building energy, and that energy is going to be expelled uh, probably uh, upon a breakout of the current area of balance that we have. These markets, all these markets today and tomorrow are going to be largely sensitive to economic numbers as the equities seem to be in kind of a short time frame control. We are seeing an increase in open interest, but nothing tremendous and nothing directional. So it seems as though our short time frame are the ones kind of controlling price at this time. Emotion and volatility can be expected around any of these releases and at any time. I kind of call it the uh, sore toe effect. If you have a sore toe, it seems that you always are going to bang it on something. Caesar, so yeah, you kind of could get the whole kind of compressing the spring kind of thing. Friday is likely to be an interesting day. Good morning, Haggle Matters. Good to see you. So uh, we've got a, you know, we got a big sore toe here waiting to see what's going to bang into it and what direction it's going to go. So far, including after the uh, early numbers today, the market is in range and in value now. We've got an overnight range that's inside the, the, the previous day's range that's inside the previous day's range. Caesar, you could call this coiling, building energy, whatever you want to call it. It's an interesting situation. We're still looking at the last week's low and high as the extremes of the area of balance, and I'm going to be using balance to break out rules at those extremes. Uh, we have very little overnight inventory here. We've just been chopping around here. Maybe we've gotten a little bit short in short time frame here prior to the open. Last week's high and low, again, still the balance extremes and the balance to break out rules are going to apply at those levels. Inside value, I'm going to stay patient. It seems as though the expectation we had yesterday of repair from the previous day's profile has played out. We've got, you know, lower high, higher low. We're inside value, no real overnight inventory. I'm going to try and stay patient this morning, expecting better trade locations as the day gets goes along. Now, take a look at the TPO chart here. This is the, re the regular trading hour session only TPO chart. Go away. All right, there it goes. All right, so... We have a normal variation trading day. We're getting kind of a very balanced day. We, we took care of the, rep the repair of Tuesday's session for pretty much all day yesterday. The lower extreme of the initial balance remains the extreme. There's one market that did that yesterday. We talk about how often one extreme or the other of the initial balance remains one extreme for the range for the day. One down today, one down yesterday. There, we got almost all of them yesterday with that case. Well, here we are. Here's our overnight low in range. We're trading in balance, in, in value. Here's the overnight high. The overnight low and the overnight high are 
short time frame levels that traders are going to be looking at. Yesterday's low and high are short time frame levels that traders are going to be looking at. The previous day's high and low are also levels that traders, short time frame traders are going to be looking at. There's going to be a lot of levels that short time frame traders are interested in looking for execution. So try and stay patient. Think smarter than the average retail trader. If you're looking at a level, think about the other traders that might be looking at that level and then think about where their stops are going to be. You're going to have algos active today. They were active yesterday. They're active just about every day, but they do a very good job of sniffing out the weaker hand traders, the 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 retail traders that are looking at specific levels like overnight highs, overnight lows, like range highs, range lows. The market may go and take out the stops outside of those levels before returning back into range. So be, be thinking about, okay, if this level looks good to me, it probably looks good to other traders. Where are their stops going to be? And that's where I'm going to try and get in. I'm going to try and outsmart my competitors by, by kind of acting like one of the algos, if, you're, if you sense that there's going to be an execution of longs down here, the stops you know are going to be down here, maybe you look a little bit more patient, you try and get better trade location, and that also allows you to limit your risk with greater possibilities. So... Inside range, it looks like we're kind of uh, kind of looking like we may extend the overnight range here to the downside a little bit. Anything, of course, can happen. Anything can change. We've got a naked TPO point of control down here from Tuesday's session, naked volume point of control down here from last week. These are all levels that short time frame traders can look at. And again, it's the over. It's the weekly kick. Uh, it's the weekly range that I'm looking at as more seriously as the area of balance. Anything in the middle, I'm going to be really reasonable with expectations as far as profit targets are concerned. You know, aside from Bostic speaking and the crude numbers coming out, everything depends on unemployment tomorrow. Keep that in mind. We're digesting the information already today. We got to see what happens when the regular trading hour participants come into this market. We'll see that on Make Hogue Money, about eight twenty. Uh, crude oil. All right. Well, we have uh, some some pretty good continuation yesterday. Look at the volume. The open interest increased by 42,000 contracts yesterday on a breakout below the weekly kickoff low and a continuation thereof. I would call that new business coming in. I would call that sellers, new sellers coming into this market. Okay, uh, I'm not looking for opportunities for longs here. I'm not maybe until we get down to around $70, the, the floor that was put in by the White House about a month ago saying they're going to start buying crude to refill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve around 70 Are we too short? It was looking like that earlier. We seem to be now looking like we've opened near the low of the overnight range here. We're going to check out the 30-minute here in just a second. Um... We are still in a, in a contango type of situation, which means the spot, the cash price for crude oil is below the futures price for whatever that's worth. If we are getting too short, it wouldn't be unreasonable to see some sort of a fast type of rally to look for an opportunity to sell strength. It's going to be difficult, I think, today to try and find um, levels to limit risk. My dream level for us to get it to get down to is that 70 level, that 70 floor that was put in by the White House. Take a look at the 30 minute chart. So here's crude. We had some overnight longs that are already out of the marketplace. Uh, looks like we've got the opening range at the high of the regular trading hour session. Uh, that's going to keep me looking for shorts until it proves to be wrong. Uh, let's take a look here. Here's the one-minute chart. Here's the opening range. The opening range is so far the high of the session. 
So it's got me thinking that we've got seller control already. If we take out the high of the opening range, that can change. Here's the 30 again. Overnight inventory already reconciled. What are the longer time frame traders doing? What are they thinking? So far, they're in control, but in a very small way. 30 minute here. Uh, I'm going to really be trying to manage expectations inside yesterday's value area until after the EIA, which does come out late today at 10 a.m. Central because of the holiday on Monday. Take a look here. We've got a uh, TPO situation here. We've opened. It was looking like we were going to open with rejection of the late spike that occurred yesterday. We have opened above the late spike. Now that would mark rejection of lower pricing and leave this late spike as excess at the low. This is a very interesting level that we've just traded down to. It's kind of conflicting information. It's cognitive dissonance. The opening range is the high of the day, which says, look short, but we've rejected, at least for now, the late spike that occurred yesterday. I'm thinking that the late spike is the stronger of the nuances and showing that we've rejected that level has me very cautious to look for shorts. If we get down here and we get through the the late spike, then I'm looking more for the for the short side. But this this move right to the base of the late spike, which is, mm, uh, where is it? Uh, seventy two eighty eight. Seventy two eighty eight. Look where we went down to seventy two ninety. Support. We've got an all an afternoon pullback high, which actually happens to be our point of control. Well, I'm looking more like the afternoon pullback high up to here, thirty uh, seventy three ninety two. But this point of control, this afternoon pullback right up to here, is also an interesting type of level. So about a twenty point interesting area for us here as well. Yesterday, the initial balance was an extreme, so there's two out of two for us. NASDAQ. All right, very similar, of course, to the S&Ps. Short time frame balance, central location inside last week's range. Um, last week's high and low are the extremes of the area of balance that we're looking at. We added 1,300 in open interest yesterday. Um, kind of a digestion day yesterday, kind of a repair day yesterday. The Sorto rule is in effect, and that may not come into play until tomorrow's employment numbers come out. Here's the 30-minute chart. So, yes, we've extended the overnight range now. We are now below value in the NASDAQ. Overnight inventory has been reconciled. So again, overnight low, overnight high. Yesterday's high, yesterday's low. Tuesday's high, Tuesday's high, Tuesday's low, Tuesday's high. Lots of opportunity to look at levels for executions that will allow you to limit risk. But I'm going to try and stay patient as long as we remain inside last week's high and low. Weekly kickoff low is last week's low. Weekly uh, last week's high, just above eleven thousand one eighty. So those are my really kind of more important levels that I'm looking for the market to trade to and take opportunities at. Balance to breakout rules are in play at these levels. We're fading these extremes until we see acceptance outside of this area of balance. In that case, we would go with a breakout that is showing acceptance outside of this area of balance. Anything in the middle, manage expectations for profit targets, look for opportunities that are asymmetrical, two to one reward over risk, and take them. Gold. 
getting a nice pullback in gold as the dollar has had this pop after the numbers this morning. We added 9,400 contracts estimated in gold yesterday. That's healthy for the upside auction. Volume is a little bit lower. Volume waffled just a little bit. Now we've got new information in the marketplace and everything. You know, the dollar has taken uh, uh, you know, a pretty decent upside move here. It's up a little over a half a percent as we speak. So we're seeing dollar-related products. We're going to see the euro down as well. We're seeing those products taking a bit of a hit. I'm not concerned as long as we don't re-accept below 1831 weekly kickoff high. Here's the 30. We do have some kind of sloppy structure down here. We have a gap just above this 1831 uh, weekly kickoff level here. There's a gap here. We've got a naked point of control that looks like we had just almost traded to. Maybe we did just hit it relatively close. I'm going to call that a hit. So we're getting a little bit short here in short time frame. It'll be an interesting day. The TPO chart shows... Uh, the IB extreme is the high of yesterday. So far, the IB high is the high of today. Again, we've got a little bit of sloppy structure down here to pick up. Look at how this market picked up the points of control here, points of control here, not here. So we got a little bit of sloppy structure down below to, to, to go check out. I'm looking at this as a potential opportunity to buy a weakness as long as we hold above 1831. Right, now we're getting another test of weekly kickoff low in the euro uh, as the dollar has been leaking to the upside. We had an open, an open, in, open interest increase yesterday off of that was not supported by volume. So this pullback yesterday, I'm thinking, was was weaker hands on low volume. That, I think, is going to help us if we can accept below weekly kickoff low here, which is 1.0600. If we can accept below that, I think that's going to add more power to a downside move. That's going to break our structure from upside to balance to potentially downside structure. But right now, the balanced state remains. Balanced breakout rules are in play and, and happening as we speak right now. Here's yesterday's profile, a normal variation type day. Um, there's one of the IBs was one of the IB extremes was not one of the extremes of the regular trading hour session yesterday. Uh, balanced digestion, unable to close the gap. We're seeing now activity back down here near weekly kickoff low. The rule, if we can't accept below, we're looking for opportunities for the price, for price to return back into the area of balance. If we accept below, we're looking to go with that exception, that acceptance, and see this market continue to the downside. So this is a pivotal area that, uh, that should allow us to limit risk. If it becomes magnetic, similar to the way it did down here pre previously, that can chop you up. So be careful. The, the tenure is in a bit of a pickle. It's a really hard read I've got written down here. Volume and open interest both increased on these up days. Higher open, higher open interest, the higher volume. We added fifty thousand in open interest yesterday, on a kind of a breakout above last week's high. Obviously, that has not maintained continuation. Take a look at the thirty. There is so much sloppy structure above and now below we've got a gap here that remains unfilled we've got a couple of un unchecked points of control 
We tried to get out below, above last week's high unsuccessfully yesterday as the market closed back below it. So I'm looking for more rotation to the downside, maybe come down here and clean up some of this stuff before we see, well, I mean, we're not going to see rates going lower anytime soon. Uh, here's the TPO chart. IB Extreme yesterday here, a week high, also a week low. Now we've opened with a gap. There's weak highs and weak lows. There's sloppy structure all over the place here. Look at all these naked points of control above and below. It's a hard read. This market is hard to read, even with profile, because you get so many weak highs, weak lows. Tough trade. Take a quick look here at the natural gas. I'm kind of interested to see if we see some continuation to the downside here below weekly kickoff low. We had a digestion day yesterday, but we added uh, 7,200 in open interest. That's going to be building energy to the downside, I believe. The two-day balance low is being tested, and now we are showing possible signs of acceptance. I'm not looking to buy this market is what I'm thinking. If I were going to be trading it actively, we are starting to one time frame. We are seeming to build momentum down to the downside here. I'm not going to step in front of this with anybody's money. When whenever I say that, I usually put in the low. It struggled badly to the upside yesterday. Took a look at this profile. So it, it was a distribution of time and volume, a distribution of time and volume. It could not maintain the single TPOs here had tried to go higher and just could not please the buyers good enough or ran into too many sellers to where we couldn't put in that double distribution trend day. This market struggled to the upside yesterday and it is showing in today's market. No IB extreme yesterday in the natural gas. So we've certainly got some interesting things going on in the markets and we know that we've got more data coming out tomorrow. So we're going to try and stay patient. We're going to see um, the uh, the open here in the S&Ps here in, uh, in Maycoke Money in just a few minutes. And we'll see if we can't find some opportunities there. I'm looking forward to having you with me. Looking forward to your ideas. Mike Fries, good to see you. Uh, you can't really tell. It's more of an of an assumption, Anthony, that if that you can tell a certain day has more or less algos creating the trade volume. The algos don't like high volatility. They just don't work in high volatility periods of time. Yesterday was a low vol volatility period as the market was in a range. So the, we know that the algos are going to be highly active in those range bound days. We we get long trendy type days. They're a little less active, and high volatility. They just shut down. Spencer, I wouldn't have expected to see Natty below four bucks this winter either, but that's probably why it is. Hello, Alex. Good to see you. All right, let's take our deep breath. I'll see you in just a few minutes and make hog money. We're all going to stay humble, grateful, and creative in our markets today. We are all going to stay centered. If we find ourselves out of center, we're going to find a way to get ourselves back to center. Trade well today if I don't see you for Make Hogue Money. Uh, it's, it's Thursday, so we should be having the podcast at the end of the day today. So no reflection, but I will be with you again tomorrow morning for the market forecast. It is going to be Friday. Big day tomorrow. Unemployment. So we'll see you in a few minutes. If I don't, get out there and profit today. Trade well.